What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my guide to Tamiris in Rise of Kingdoms. But first, you know the drill. We got to crack open a cold one with the boys. Let's make sure. Oh my God. Does this, it makes a mess. It makes a mess almost every single time. Game Fuel, when are you, when are you going to sponsor me, man? What's up? When are you, you going to do it? You know why they're probably not doing it? Because 75% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. And right now is the best time to subscribe because I ordered something really cool that's going to go on the wall up behind me here. It's massive. It's awesome. And I'm excited for it to come in the mail. It should be a couple of weeks. And guys, if you don't subscribe, you might miss the video where I show you what's going to go on the wall. And it's going to be epic. So make sure you sub. Okay, shameless plug is over. Guys, we're going to be talking about Tamiris today in Rise of Kingdoms. She is an archer conquering attack legendary commander in this game you get her from the mightiest governor event and if you don't have time to sit through this entire video you can check out my written guide for tamiris over on riseofkingdoms.org you can find the link in the description below now tamiris will show up in your kingdom around day 289 on the mightiest governor event calendar and then after you've completed season three of light versus darkness you can probably pick her we're still waiting for that update to come out in a couple of, a couple of days uh, but it looks like you'll be able to pick your you know legendary commander for the mightiest governor event so if you didn't get her then you'll have chances and of course there will be the legendary tavern event that's coming and the card king event so plenty of opportunities to get to myris if you didn't get her from the mightiest governor but today we're going to talk about whether or not you should get to myris should you get her should you invest in her what is she good at what is she Doing. so first what we have to do is take a look at her skills so her first skill arrow of vengeance has a rage requirement of a thousand and it will do a specific amount of direct damage factor to a single target depending on how many stacks of poison they have on them if they have somehow zero stacks it's just going to do a thousand damage factor um, if they have 10 stacks or less it'll do 1400 damage factor and if they have 11 stacks or more it will do 1800 damage factor to that single target her second skill is very straightforward tamiris's army gets 30 percent extra attack when attacking cities but they deal 10 percent less counter attack damage her third skill will give you 30 percent archer attack and a 10 percent chance to reduce the enemy defense by up to 30 percent that is one of the better defense reductions in the game for three seconds which is nice it's just shy of 10 percent off of lu bu's primary skill which does 40. Her fourth skill is really interesting. Essentially what this does is her normal attacks have a 50% chance to add a stack of poison to the target. And if I'm not mistaken, Tamaris, I think is the only commander in the game that adds poison to a target, at least at the time of recording this video. Now this can stack up to 15 times and each stack lasts five seconds, but the timer is refreshed each time a stack is added. For each stack, the target takes an extra 3% skill damage. Now, when this skill is at five, there's a 100% chance so every single normal attack, she will add one stack, which is equivalent to them taking 3% more skill damage at 15 stacks. That means they're taking 45% extra skill damage, which is nuts. Of course, when her active skill goes off, they get removed and it's inflicted as direct damage factor. And then they start building up again. You know what that means? The owl people are coming. <laughs> Now her expertise skill is going to give you 10% increased attack and 10% increased counter attack damage. And when you're attacked, they will reduce the attack of cavalry units in the attacking troops army by 10%. Now moving on to talent builds, you can see we came all the way up here, grabbed effortless, we grabbed armor joints, and then we just maxed out the archer tree. This is the only talent build that I have for you uh, for Tamiris. And the reason for that is because she's primarily gonna be a secondary commander almost all the time, especially when you, she first comes around, she's gonna be secondary to Edward and virtually any other time that you use her. So this is a build that you can use if you do use her as a primary, but I think most of the time that is not gonna be the case. Okay. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's start to break down Tamiris in her respective categories, okay? So as always, the first category is the open field category. Now, Tamiris actually performs better here than almost anywhere else, and the reason for that is because her ability to make a target take up to 45% extra skill damage is absolutely deadly in a coordinated alliance and when the meta is skill damage. And right now with archers, there's a lot of skill damage going around. There's also a lot of skill damage, you know, just in general in the game right now with the, with the massive, of, massive amount of commanders that are in the game. Tamiris actually, you know, originally, I think a lot of players kind of didn't really look at her. They were like, ah, eh, she's not that great. She doesn't provide, you know, that many stats and things like that. Uh, but you know, 
taking a look you know retrospectively looking at tamiris she actually provides such a unique utility with her poison debuff that she applies um she can really help in melting down some super powerful super tanky commanders in the open field and again this is really useful when you have a very coordinated alliance maybe you're joining discord calls you're on voice chat or you know even if you're maybe a mega whale who just has five completely stacked armies with a ton of skill damage tamiris is going to be an absolute beast and super super uh, supportive in the open field because again any target that has this the poison debuff stacks is going to be taking more skill damage and the reason that this is more important for coordinated groups than it is for a single player is because you know maybe when those stacks are there perhaps you know when they get removed you may not have a coordinated skill attack go off at the maximum amount of poison stacks right but the more players that are hitting a target with skill damage the higher the probability that they're going to be dealing all their skill damage during that 45 percent skill damage taken uh increase so because of that because of tamiris's unique ability in this game to really help melt down targets right tamiris in my opinion gets an s tier for the open field right she gets an s tier in this category she's very unique and as more commanders come into the game with higher skill damage tamiris is always going to be a commander that you have to look out for because you might just get absolutely wrecked let's move on to rallying objectives now you're going to actually see in kvk uh, 2 you're going to see a lot of uh, edward tamiris rallies right that's a very powerful rallying combo for archers especially earlier on in your kingdom's life cycle you know before that one year mark um this is going to be one of the best archer rallies that you can that you can do right because edward has a mega skill damage and tamiris is applying a ton of stacks right uh, and the reason that you want tamiris secondary in a in pretty much every scenario this is what i was talking about with the talent builds is that because you want that primary commander's skill damage to go off before Tamiris is because her primary skill removes those stacks so you want the big damage to hit while those stacks are at an all-time high then you want to remove them with Tamiris so um because of that you know with her and Edward and virtually her with any other high skill damage archer commander uh with her as secondary she's actually really good at hitting ob objectives right and so she earns an A tier in the rallying objectives category now she's not S tier for a couple of reasons uh one the first reason is that you really mainly see her during that Edward era right once you see Latilla Takeda you don't really see Tamiris too much and then you know again late 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 game you see her kind of make that return uh because of all the new commanders that are in the game but she's never she never comes back to like meta status at least at the time of recording this video that could change again if we see an archer legendary come out that you know maybe deals as much skill damage as edward with a thousand rage requirement like you know there there's endless possibilities that could make tamiris come back to that meta um but right now i i don't think she is quite there um but she does have a ton of good uses and again she she has a unique role right so rallying objectives she gets an now the next category is rallying cities and this is slightly different for Tamiris and I do want to I do want to you know preface this by saying um, this category is for rallying cities but I also want to include swarming cities right and I think you, you can see where I'm going with this uh, Tamiris has a again that poison debuff that's I mean if you're watching this video you're probably wondering about that poison debuff right like that's what makes her special um, and so when it comes to Tamiris hitting cities I think she actually performs a bit better than hitting objectives and the reason for that is this second skill you now have 30 percent extra attack now sure you're dealing less counterattack damage but if she's expertise you get that right back so it's just a straight 30 percent increase in attack when you're hitting that city and again you are causing a poison debuff to that city so what does this mean this means that t the the presence of a single tamiris in a battle right means that everybody around can now deal more skill damage to that target so if you want to swarm a city tamiris makes that instantly way more viable because now all of you know even the free-to-play players that are in your alliance their minamotos are not not free to play low spenders with their minamotos and tau taus and, and all that good stuff right now they're dealing way more damage and uh, guys minamoto deals a lot of damage right and that's a common legendary that you see um a lot of skill damage right so tamiris being present when hitting a city again makes it so you can swarm that city uh, you can multi rally that city right you can multi rally it with skill damage and just her being there is going to be super powerful so for all the reasons that she's good for rallying objectives 
plus the ability to uh deal to have 30 percent extra attack i think tamiris is an s tier commander for hitting a city i really do i think that her just being there makes rallying and hitting cities way more effective when you have a ton of skill damage going off and very few other legendary commanders really can make that much of an impact by there only being one of them around right you only need one tamiris to apply those poison debuffs uh, for it to be a really it's for it to be a game changer the next two categories are defending objectives and defending cities and we've talked a ton about uh, how good tamiris is up until this point uh but defending flags and objectives and cities and things like that it's just not what tamiris does it's not what she's good at there's no garrison tree there's no defense tree there's nothing super special about her skills that would make her incredible um for that right now you know if you do have like an artemisia primary having that poison debuff on the rallying army could make artemisia deal a ton of skill damage but ultimately that poison debuff is best used when surrounded and i i don't know i would just rather have a tamaris outside the garrison applying that debuff right so yeah there's just no real good reason in my opinion to have her in uh in a garrison in your city wall anything like that so for that reason she gets a d in both of these categories the next category is canyon how good is tamaris in your canyon team now tamaris we've talked about her being good in the open field right we gave her an s for open field fighting um in canyon it's a little bit different right because you don't have that coordination that you could have with you know your alliance members if you're in a discord you can say hey i'm gonna hit this target i'm gonna hit this richard in the open field right this richard martell um and now everyone on your voice channel knows that hey that tamaris is going to apply debuff to that army let's melt it down with our skill damage um when it comes to canyon you still have that poison debuff but you don't really get too much exact precise control over where your skill damage is going and in fact it's most likely not going to go to that target that you're applying it to and so tamiris while she is a powerful archer legendary she's good in canyon but she's not as you know premium and epic as she is in some of the other uh categories here on this list so for that reason tamiris gets a you know right in the middle right a, a middle b she gets a b for your canyon team you could find her in some canyon teams but you know she's she's she's, she's, she's decent right she's decent she's not amazing mind-blowing meta meta changing finally we have the barbs and forts category now tamiris uh you know for pve content she's fine right there's some archer commanders that that give you some mark speed right and and you could bring tamaris with them and you know for pve content you are going to deal more skill damage to them right because of that poison i keep talking about that but ultimately you know there's no peacekeeping tree here she's not giving you extra damage to barbs she's not giving you extra experience right there's nothing that screams use tamaris for pve content and for that reason i just don't think that there's you know like why would you use tamiris right there's so many good peacekeepers in the game and, and a lot of them are epic tier right you don't even need to invest in a legendary to do that um so for that reason uh, tamiris gets a c for this category you know she's fine uh, maybe if you're rallying like you know forts or something you might want this i don't know that like you could do it it's just like why right why now with all that being said right tamiris performing really good in our first three categories and then really average or poor in our final four categories how does she you know stack up against the rest of the legendaries where does she fall in this investment tier list and i think ultimately Tamiris is a B tier legendary investment. And again, the reason for this is because she has a niche role. And in that role, her being present makes the, it could change everything, right? It could change everything in terms of how much skill damage the enemies are taking. But ultimately, as an investment, I think that she gets overshadowed by a lot of other commanders, right? There's just a, there's a ton of investments in this game that I think are just a better use for your legendary commander sculptures now if you're a mega whale in this game and you've already expertise a lot of the top tier commanders i think tamiris is a really interesting one that you should be looking at right really interesting one you could be looking at because she's going to just enhance and elevate the performance of all the other skill damage commanders that you have but for your average player i think again this in my opinion is a b tier legendary investment now one thing i want to talk about really quick about tamiris is that we have that skill lock feature coming up and you're going to be able to pick her when the mightiest governor comes around most likely we still need to see how those the details are details are with that um but with the skill lock feature we don't know the details about it but um if you can lock two skills at a time on a legendary commander like if i could lock both the second and the third skills with tamiris you could make her a 5115 legendary commander for roughly 190 legendary commander sculptures and now what you have is the best possible uh poison applying tamiris 
for the least amount of sculpture investment now you will be missing the archer attack bonus and the defense uh reduction right um this is a really good skill but if what you really care about is just applying that poison debuff to the target perhaps with the skill locked feature tamaris is a low investment legendary that could make you super super useful to your alliance right 190 legendary commander sculptures isn't a crazy investment to have a really unique debuff so i wanted to throw that out there i know we haven't seen the skill lock feature come in the game yet but if it works in a way where you can lock two skills at once perhaps more players will start to invest in tamaris for that poison and of course if you can only lock one you'll lock that second one and then you'll have a monster archer um in the open field guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video and you if you found it useful make sure you click that thumbs up button right but only if you want to just, just click the thumbs up button no pressure it's free you don't have to do it but if you want to do it go ahead and do it it'll help me out right especially that subscribe button too it's free you know it's free to do it don't do it if you don't want to but hey you might want to because i got some cool stuff we're going to be putting up on this wall here and you're not going to want to miss that right you don't want to miss it you know it's going to be three months from now and you're going to be like you know what i never subbed to omniarch and i forgot to watch his videos and now i want to know what did he put on that wall you don't want to be that guy comment down below what you think about Tamiris. I know that this video is probably going to be more polarizing than some of the other ones, because I think for the longest time people overlooked Tamiris she said she wasn't very good. And then now recently, I think she's making a little bit of a comeback. So I want to hear your comments. Do you think I'm on point with her? Do you think she deserves more praise? Do you think she deserves less praise? I'd love to hear from you as always. My social media links are in the description below. So make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, discord, Facebook, everything like that. It's always in the description, but again, only follow me if you want to. You don't got to do it, but hey, why not, right? Go ahead and do it. It's free. Finally, there is a link in the description below to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Blue Stacks, and it is my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms because the screen is big. I've got a big screen on my computer, and the game looks beautiful. Honestly, the better you can see this game, uh, the, the better you're going to perform, in my opinion. And if you're not playing on a giant screen, I think you're at a little bit of a disadvantage. So why don't you click that link? It's free. Give it a try, and I think you'll like it. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.